Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Tisha, and I work with the Saudi Graduate Recruitment and Development Team here at KAUST. This evening, you're listening to the alumni panel, and I have with me Lee Sublett, who's the Manager of Alumni Affairs here at KAUST. Lee, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for bringing a wonderful panel with you, and the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Tisha. Well, good evening, good afternoon uh, to you all. I hope you're well. And thank you so much for joining our wonderful session. Uh, welcome, uh, sorry, called Success After Cast. I have three remarkable alumni who will be talking uh, with me over the next 30 minutes about their careers, and also reflecting on their time at KAUST, which has enabled each of them to do what it is they're doing now. I have Jumana Bagabra with me, who's the digital policy expert for the National Digital Transformation Unit. I have Siba Nadif, who is a postdoctoral researcher at MIT and is joining us from Boston. And I have Maram Abadi, who is with the Red Sea Development Company where she is the Senior Special Projects Manager. So Jamana and Maram in Riyadh uh, and Seba in Boston, welcome to you all. Uh, I'd like you now to introduce yourselves briefly before we jump into a question each. And Jamana, let me start with you. Great, uh, thanks. First of all, thank you so much for the inv invitation, I'm really, uh, happy to be sharing a little bit about you know what I've done since KAUST. Uh, I uh, graduated in 2014 with a master's in computer science and uh, currently I'm working in the National Digital Transformation Unit. It's a government entity and uh, as you mentioned I'm a digital policy expert. Great, thank you. Sipa. Hello everyone, good to see you again. Uh, my name is Seba Nadif and currently I'm a postdoc at MIT uh, in the lab of Robert Langer, the co-academic founder of Moderna Company. Prior to that, I was at KAUST, uh, I did my PhD and I graduated in 2020. And uh, I joined like eight months ago, the lab of Robert Langer at MIT. Fantastic, thank you. And Maram. Hi everyone, first of all, th thanks for the invitation. So uh, I'm Maram Abadi. I earned my master and my PhD from KAUS in bioscience. And now I'm working as a senior special project manager uh, in the research development company. Fantastic, thank you. So quite a diversity of professional backgrounds and also disciplines. Jamana, who is a computer scientist or at least you studied computer science. Let me start by asking you a question. Uh, because of our panelists, you have pursued a career initially in industry and, uh, and now you're with government. Uh, what role did KAUST play in supporting your career? Good. Um, so uh, I started uh, a few months after graduating from KAUST. I joined Simmons, uh, actually. Uh, through the KAUST Career Fair, I, that's where I interviewed and uh, I joined um, the SGP, it's the Siemens Graduate Program for, um, you know, uh, people who graduated from master's or PhD. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting experience. I spent a few years uh, with Siemens and um, after that I started to work uh, with NDU, the National Digital Transformation Unit. Um, so KAUST is drilled in general, maybe uh, it's definitely gonna be a quick summary. So if you have any follow-up questions, I'm happy to share. Um, I'll say that uh, my decision to do my master's was purely based on you know, my interest in the field. And uh, at the time uh, I wasn't sure what I would do after graduating, like all, uh, all options, opportunities were still a bit vague for me, but after graduating, um, I realized that, uh, you know, the things that I've done at KAUST kind of uh, gave me a really nice um, introduction and a really nice overview of what I'm interested in. So uh, again, it started with computer science. Um, I uh, took a few courses in machine learning and visualization and um, following my interests over there. Uh, and then, um, 
again, following interests and curiosities, I had the opportunity to work uh, in a research uh, related to kind of looking into um, visualization and uh, of, of the human brain. Um, and uh, I think uh, this, this I, the, the research aspect in general was one of the main things that kind of opened uh, um, lots of uh, like curiosities for me. So I was uh, very interested in learning about what was going on, uh, not just within the field of computer science, even having friends and, and you know, people within my network doing their own research. Um, so that was a big, uh, big learning um, kind of area for me. Um, something else I might add is the network, the people, the friendships that you make, um, whether or not it was within the people in my program or people across programs, and some of the people are here on the panel with us as well. Um, so, you know, um, I think in general, during, during my time in Kaust, all of these things came together, like doing learning from courses and learning from research and, and kind of having the opportunity you know, we have so much uh, people doing really amazing things and, and uh, peers as well doing their own research. Um, I think uh, after graduating, um, even, you know, it's very uh, fascinating and I feel very proud having graduated from KAUST, um, kind of the reputation it has, um, even like uh, uh, across, you know, different industries and people who, who know of KAUST today. Uh, whenever I say, oh, I graduated from KAUST, a bunch of questions uh, jump out. And then uh, I think that's a very nice, uh, a very good sign about, you know, the, the type of work that's being done and kind of the people who are there as well. Um, yeah, so I think uh, it's, it's, it's a bunch of things. Um, I mentioned like the courses, uh, the research. I think that was the main thing that really got me interested into uh, kind of interdisciplinary work. Um, and, you know, where it connects to what I do today is, uh, is mostly, you know, within digital policy, it's really important to understand the impact of the technologies that we use. And uh, I think my time at Cal gave me a really good understanding of that. Yeah, fantastic, Jumana. And you mentioned a couple of very interesting points, which I think are really evident in the grad school environment that we're in at Cal which is career fair. It's interesting to hear how many of our alumni have gone on to find their next uh, professional opportunity entirely as a result of making sure that they're present at Career Fair. You also mentioned networks and developing uh, your, your networks across a range of areas and particularly uh, across the inter interdisciplinary aspect of, of CAUS. So a couple of interesting takeaways there that uh, if we have time, we will come back to explore. So thank you for that. And I'm going to go on to my next question with you, Siva. You're a postdoctoral fellow at MIT and you're working in the area of vaccines and vaccine research. Could you tell us a little bit more about your research? Because I think I'm being very brief when I say you're working in the area of research uh, in, in vaccines. Um, and, you know, thinking about you being at MIT, was it your dream to pursue your research internationally once you completed your PhD at KAUST? Okay, let me start then from the beginning. Before joining MIT, so during my journey at KAUST, uh, I used to be, uh, I graduated from the bioscience department. So my field was in basic science in the field of epigenetics. So I was exposed to most of the high novel techniques in the field that I could take with me and transfer them to MIT. So it was a great starting point because during my time at KAUST, I was really exposed to perfect and top facilities to help me to be at MIT. Aside from my research is that, this is an advice from me to every student is don't like focus 100% on your lab work. Try to be open to different resources around you. If you wanna pursue your career in the industry or research and KAUS is the perfect place because they have all these courses, entrepreneurship courses and all these STEM challenges where you can transfer your research to the next level and you take it, for example, to more into functional research. So 
that's where actually that's where I discovered my interest during at Kaust is I want to pursue my postdoctoral uh, research in more translated field. So I've decided to look around and see where can I join. And then I found Ibn Khaldun Fellowship for Saudi women and I applied during their visit to Kaust. And uh, I was lucky that I got accepted. It's very competitive and very challenging. And then I was given the opportunity to join uh, Robert Langer lab. So in the lab, they, it's a combination of different fields, uh, including material science. And with all this, I have like, not really the perfect knowledge in what to do, but I could contribute as a biologist to understand more the biology of the vaccine and the materials they fabricate in the lab. And at the same time, I try to expand my knowledge and learn about uh, fabrication of different materials they are using in the lab for different targets in the field of vaccine and, uh, and drug delivery. It was not the first time for me to be exposed to international environment during my journey at Kaust. I was a fellow between Kaust and UC Irvine in California. So I was exposed to the international, uh, like different labs, different international like mindset. But MIT is different because an institute where they focus more on technologies and translated research. So this is for me uh, an interesting point where I am focusing now on more on translational research. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Siva, so much. And we'll come back to you in a moment. Maram, uh, you, your journey at KAUST was wonderfully long as, uh, as both a, a master's and a PhD student. And once you graduated with your PhD, you spent some time doing your postdoctoral research, uh, as well as working in a KAUST startup. So you really had an incredibly holistic experience. And you left KAUST earlier this year uh, to start work in Riyadh with the Red Sea Development Corporation. Uh, how do you think that your KAUST experience has enriched your expertise to go and work with uh, the Red Sea Development Corporation? Yeah, this is one of the things that it's unique about KAUST that you can do it all at once. So I was doing my PhD while, um, while I was working in a startup company. So uh, during my stay at KAUST for the last 10 years, because I got my master, my PhD, and my postdoc in KAUST, so I had a chance to explore different fields uh, within bioscience. So during my master, I worked in uh, water dissemination and reuse center and center of desert agriculture. And I did my PhD in biophysics and bioimaging. And I was focusing on studying the DNA dynamics and on uh, uh, an, uh, advanced optical microscopy. And I get a chance to win uh, the L'Oreal and UNESCO uh, for Women in Science in 2017. And um, uh, as a postdoc, I worked in different collaboration with other division within KAUST, uh, like petroleum engineering, a center of desert agriculture. And uh, I was involved in the startup company as well, which gave me like uh, a different perspective for the science-based uh, project. And this is what I like uh, apply in my current position because now I'm working as a senior special project manager. So any project that have a, a scientific pace. So this is the, the kind of project that I'm handling right now. It almost seems like a perfect job for you given how you started the answer to the question, which was Kaust enables you to do so many things all at once because a project manager is juggling all sorts of projects all at once. What an ideal fit. Yeah, this is uh, like, I feel like I'm so lucky because I found like a perfect fit for me. Yeah, and and Maram, if I can ask a, a second question sure. to you before I go back to uh, Jumana and Siba. Uh, did you ever think that while you were doing your postdoctoral work at KAUST that a career in academia was something that you were going to pursue or did you know that at some point you would go into something different like the job that you've gone into at Red Sea Development? Actually, once I finished my PhD, I was like, I want to explore like the different opportunity. So that's why I work as a postdoc because I want like at that point, I want to, uh, to complete my research. But then once I found this opportunity in the Red Sea, uh, I, like I applied for it and I found it like really interesting. 
So I'm kind of person who like like to learn a new things. So I feel like this is like a good step for me. Fantastic. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, Siba, can I just ask a second question of you while we're thinking about uh, going into depth a little bit for future students who are listening in just at the moment. Do you think that you will pursue a career in academia? So many of our future and current students uh, are thinking about pursuing a PhD, but these days quite often ask us in these alumni panels, well, if I get a PhD, am I going to be locked in to an academic career? Do you have any comment on that? And how might you see your career after your postdoctoral research? Yeah, of course, it's a very good question. Actually, people always, me as a student, I thought the same, is that when you start your PhD, you think that you will be like spending the next 10 or 20 years of your life doing the same, unless you are like very sure you wanna do this, you know? But for people who are confused, you think like uh, you are maybe struggling, what am I doing? And what I want to say is that the PhD is a journey where you're exposed to, to different things, even the stress, the technologies, the lab, people, like you're exposed to different things. So it's a journey. So try to learn as much as you can. And trust me, by the end of the year, you will figure out what do you want to do in your life. And if you are in a place like Kaust, where you have all the support to be, like, as I mentioned, participating in different like challenges or event or courses, try to open like yourself to these courses because one course might change your life. Like although the PhD journey is five years and you think like you are very good in teaching, you want to be, you want to pursue a career in academia, but then one course will be an eye opener for you. Or maybe there are like an opportunity, there's an opportunity where you can combine research with the industry. So not necessarily like you quit research. So there are many opportunities outside. You just need to be there and try to catch them as much as you can and, and be like, be presented. <laughs> so try to learn as much as you can and uh, don't, don't stress yourself. You will figure out like your way at the end. Yeah, and I guess it's about exposing yourself to uh, yeah. the myriad of opportunities that exist at KAUST and, uh, and thinking about the alumni community who I have the pleasure an honor of working with on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's extraordinary to think of some of the opportunities that uh, you are all exposed to on a very regular basis, whether or not it's participating in uh, entrepreneurship programs that enable you to do as Maram did, go and, and work for a startup uh, yeah. or, or to do a number of, of different overseas learning opportunities. So. Uh, so anyway, we, we can come back to explore that. But Jumana, I wanted to ask you a completely different question. Um, and that is, what does a day in the life of a, uh, a digital policy expert look like? What is it that you're actually doing and working on? So I have a theory. Uh, a day in the life of anyone who goes to work is similar to anyone else so basically um that's a, just a short answer because it's uh, it's definitely a question i asked a lot to uh, all of the uh, employers i would go interview to when i started um looking for work um and uh, basically i think if, if i say like what what does it what do i do in general is uh, i work across uh, different uh, different government agencies and uh, work together with them to understand uh, the shifts that are happening today um, with respect to uh, digital transformation and the digital economy um, i think uh, um, i mean we've seen like the impact you know being able to attend things virtually and sometimes in some fields uh, specific regulations or specific policies can um, can still be kind of a bit behind uh, behind the innovations and the technology developments that we're seeing. So we kind of support these uh, different agencies and bodies uh, with this. Uh, and we also work um, on ensuring that, you know, the emerging technologies and the developments, you know, to harness them, but at the same time to make sure that uh, uh, we can safely use them. So uh, effective and safe use generally. Um, 
so that's uh, every day it feels like uh, mundane it feels like I'm talking to people making calls uh, answering emails but uh, I think uh, what what something that I did want to say as well is um, um, it's like I didn't imagine myself doing this right now um, and uh, going off what Saba mentioned uh, about taking the opportunities when you can. It's, it's great to have an idea, a, sp a specific idea of where you want to see yourself. Um, but if you don't, um, there's something that I read recently that really kind of resonated with me that um, a kind of a career or, or knowing, you know, how things make sense, that only makes sense in ret retrospect when you kind of, you know, create the dots and then later you connect and see how they kind of make sense. Yeah, I like that very much. That's that's so true. I look back on my career and I think that's very true. But if only we had that advice at the time that we're struggling with the, well, what will I do now? Will I do a PhD? Will I go into academia or research or something else? Um, I'm just conscious of the time, but we've got a bit more time. I think I want to ask the question uh, to each of you, uh, and that is, We've got a group of future cast masters and or PhD students who are listening. And if you had one piece of advice to give them as they're thinking about graduate school, as they're thinking about which graduate school, or they might be thinking about why cast, what would your piece of advice be to them? And I don't know if one of you wants to uh, put up your hands to answer that question first, or if you need a little bit of time to think about it. I think I will start. Okay, Maram, go for it. So I think my only advice for them is like to take all the opportunity that they like face it because they don't know, they may like it. And uh, one more thing, a lot of people think that uh, like to have, like uh, if you want to complete your PhD, that means that you're gonna complete your career in academia, as you mentioned before, which is not. Because for me, like I feel like having, uh, I see like having uh, the PhD is more like a lifestyle. Okay, uh, we gain the knowledge, but we gain like uh, the, the most important, the soft skill that you're gonna apply it in all your life aspect. So it's, a, it's more like a lifestyle. It's not like a degree or like just a certificate. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And being able to evolve your soft skills uh, is, is something that you certainly did whilst you were a student uh, and also as an alumna still working and living at KAUST. Uh, and I'll throw out there that you're a member of the Saudi Arabian alumni chapter. So, you know, you, you continue to use those skills that you developed in a range of different areas. Thanks, Maram, for that answer. Siba, you had your hand up to give a piece of advice to those future students listening. Well, I have three. three. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, the, the first one is like, uh, no matter what is your career goal, be patient and be functional and active. Like, don't, uh, don't surrender from the first time if you fail because you will fail in every like in every path you will do like, like you will select whether it's academia or it's the industry it's a very it's a very challenging journey so just like to be patient and try to be very uh, like uh, productive and the second thing is uh, if you have the opportunity to be at KAUST use the advantage of uh, alumni conversations and uh, uh, networking and also career fair opportunities even if you would like to uh, if you are not sure the company that you're looking for is presented in the career fair try to apply even to different companies just to be in that loop and to have the stress of being interviewed by people who don't know about you like anything and uh, you will figure out like what do you want or how do you prepare yourself for uh, for your next interview or whatever so every single opportunity at KAUST is an eye opener for, for every student, like from like the, the first year till, till you graduate. Great advice, thank you. And, you know, thinking about your comments there about preparing yourself always, be pa being patient with yourself, uh, but, but really just preparing yourself for what's next, I guess was one of the reasons why you were ready and prepared to be able to apply for the postdoctoral fellowship 
that you spoke about uh, being awarded to go to MIT, which as you have reiterated, is an incredibly com competitive process. True. So I guess that preparedness is something that you live and breathe by. And so <laughs> it's, it's good advice that you are giving. Um, now, Jamana, your piece of advice, and then I think we might have a question. So Jamana, over to you. Great. Uh, I have uh, two general pieces of advice. Um, one is uh, it's okay, you know, if uh, things don't go exactly how you thought it would, it's fine. Um, it's all about, you know, how you make it, you know, to, to something that hopefully in the future will become better than what you thought you wanted or you thought. Um, so just generally throughout the experience and throughout your studies, throughout your work, anything you do, uh, just don't stress out too much. Um, um, you know, kind of uh, reflect on on what you're doing and where you want to be, and you know, make informed decisions. And the second piece of advice is um, tap into you know the people who are around. Um, kind of um, learn from them, uh, make friends. Uh, um, the relationships that you make, you know, especially in 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 this this time, is kind of help you to shape you who you are and um, you kind of learn from everyone and uh, hopefully they become part of your network and you can shine, share experiences and, and definitely learn from each other. Great advice and you've spoken a little bit about networking throughout this discussion but the relationship management side of things is so important for all of our careers so thank you for that advice Jumana. Now we've got a question so I'm just going to uh, we've got a question. How can I pass the academic interview, Sarah asks. Would anyone like to jump in and answer that question? How can I pass the academic interview? Well, I think um, I can go first. Uh, it uh, depends what are you applying for, like is it PhD or master's? So for example, assuming you are applying for a PhD, uh, really study the, the topic you are going to apply for. I mean, if you if you select like a PI, spend some time searching what is this PI doing, what techniques this PI is using, and what techniques you can use if you did your master, can you transfer them to your PhD, or you want to learn something different and if you want to learn something different say why you just don't go to the interview saying oh i've read this technique and it's very new and i want to do it think about what you want to do it like why you want to do this even if you don't give the perfect answer but it's about how do you think you know most of the pis want to see like how do you think are you innovative do you have plans or you just want to be there because you want to apply mm. great Thank you for that. And I think Tisha's returned because our time is almost up. So let me use my two minutes to say Jumana, Maram and Siva, thank you so much for your time today and the incredible advice that you have given to our future students who are listening in and who we hope will be among our future alumni community. And today's an important day because December the 5th is uh, International Volunteers Day and so many of our CAST alumni are volunteering, are giving back, are paying it forward to current and future students. And so on this very special day, I'd like to thank the three of you for giving your time and expertise as ambassadors on this afternoon's panel. So thank you so much. And Tisha, over to you. Thank you, Lee, so much uh, for hosting the panel. Maram, Jumana, and Siva, thank you for joining us. I think Lee said it perfectly. Thank you for volunteering your time and your insight. We appreciate it. Lee, thank you so much for just hosting and asking insightful questions. I know that it's appreciated by those listening in. And for those of you listening in, thank you so much. I hope you were able to gather some helpful insight from those who have actually been at house. They've walked in the shoes you hope to walk in soon. So in the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you in our next session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tisha. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye.